welcome everyone. And now for this uh, second Media Mastermind keynote session, we are honored to welcome Maurice Levy, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Publicis Group, the world's third largest advertising and communication group. Mr. Levy is widely recognized as a leading figure in the communication industry, responsible for Publicis' international expansion and pioneering strategic focus on digital communication and emerging markets. Maurice Levy is a visionary in leading the digital transformation of advertising by embracing content marketing and innovative communication strategy on all platforms. He has been honored with numerous distinctions for his contribution to communication and media, business leadership, innovation, tolerance, and diversity. Today, we'll discuss with Kate Buckley, media commentator and journalist, on how TV and advertising are facing common challenges today more than ever, from how to create great content to retain viewer attention, to building and monetizing an audience. So with no further ado, please join me in welcoming Kate Buckley and the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Publicis, Maurice Levy. Merci. Okay, good afternoon. I am honored to be here with Maurice. Um, Maurice, as many of you know, has been with Publicis for many years, decades in fact. He's been at Publicis for um, 43 years, he tells me, yes. And he's been CEO for 27 years. And of course, now you're on the verge of one of the biggest mergers ever. Uh, certainly in the advertising business and certainly, uh, certainly for, for your company, $35 billion uh, merger. Um, we're going to talk about a lot of things, but let me just jump right in. Last week, I was at uh, Ad Week in the UK, and Sir Martin Sorrell said that he thought the biggest threat to the industry, the advertising industry, would come from innovative small companies. So you've got a pending $35 billion merger with Omnicom, that's going to make you a huge, huge company, Maurice, right? How do you foster innovation in that kind of a global giant? Uh, bonjour, Kate. Bonjour. Thanks for being here. You told me that you would be speaking French. Oh, I forgot. Ah, okay. So I'm sorry for everyone because they will have to listen to my broken English. Yes, well, or uh, my bad French. Thank okay. Uh, I think innovation and... Uh, uh, creativity can come from anywhere. Mm. And uh, I don't see the small new startups as a threat, but as an opportunity. The first thing that they do is that they are pushing the envelope, and it, it is something which is extremely important for all of us because there are new kids in the block who are creating something fresh, something new. Yep. And we have to look at this and to question ourselves, are we still in the race? Uh, sh shall we uh, reinvent something? Uh, or shall we question the way we work, etc.? So I don't see uh, this as a threat. It has it been always the case. Yeah. You know, remember, you, no, sorry, not you. Uh, somebody in the room will remember, because it was in the good old days, ah. uh, where we had all this creative boutique. Right. And everyone was saying, this will be a threat. And uh, publicist was already a, a something a like <laughs> yeah, right. a, a dinosaur, <laughs> and we are now in Jurassic age, right. and uh, we are still leading the pack. We are the most innovative. We are the one who have invented a lot of new tools and a lot of new approaches. We have been the one who have really invested heavily in digital. So, you know, it, it is a question. Uh, maybe it is a threat for Sir Martin, I don't know, because he feels a little bit fatigué. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, as far as we are concerned, I see this as a fantastic opportunity, and I, I don't believe that there is anything uh, which can keep us resting. If you are still alive and you want to do things, you, you, you have to open your eyes, you have to open your mind and your heart, and there is a world of opportunities. We're definitely moving into a world of what I call 
sort of continuous content consumption. You know, people have always on devices, right? They're connected to the internet all the time. And it's fueled by social media, right? Twitter, Facebook, others. Um, proliferation of devices. This morning I was li listening to another presentation. There was a guy from a company named Cheeseburger. Great name, huh? And he said it's called continuous production. So how many of your agencies can lead brands down what, what I think needs to be a more iterative, iterative approach to creative? In other words, you can't just make a beautiful ad, a 30-second spot, you know, beautiful, take it to the can lions, get a prize, and you know, go home and, and pat yourself on the back. I mean, we're talking about iterative campaigns. We're talking about always-on consumption. That changes the culture of a company, doesn't it, Maurice? Yes, definitely. But, you know, again, it is so easy to say it will be all about uh, metrics, or it will be all about measurement, or all about math or all about interactivity or interactivity. I, I think that the world is not uh, uh, and or. Okay. And, and in our world, it is much more and and. And what we are seeing, and the, the most uh, we, we move in, in, the, in the future, what we are saying is that we need the 30 or 60 second commercial, and sometimes more. Look at one, one thing which happened, uh, it was uh, last year. Last year we launched uh, a, a formidable commercial. We launched it on TF1, mm -hmm. one night, a Sunday evening, a uh, 3.3 minutes commercial. Wow. It was for Cartier. We put it on the web, on YouTube, 60 million viewers. One evening, the buzz behind. The, the, the communication is much more complicated, mm. more complex. Mm. One, other, uh, one other example, you were mentioning Facebook, Twitter, etc. Mm. We, we did something for Taco Bell in mm. the US. Mm. And we used uh, uh, the subscribers and the fans uh, to follow Taco Bell. Uh, and believe it or not, there is a lot who are following Taco Bell and we love that, uh, that food. Uh, that food. Uh, it's uh, uh, something it which is no, working. Uh, uh, they, they can call it food. It's good. <laughs> you should try. Uh, and in, they, they played this with Instagram. Okay. It has been absolutely fantastic. Huge. People are huge. taking pictures. But when I say huge, huge. Hmm. Uh, big thing, including uh, the people of Facebook, Instagram, were absolutely surprised by the reaction and by the buzz around and by the number of pictures and how it has worked, etc. Mm -hmm. So there, there is every day something different. The, we, we are in a connected world. The people love to be connected. They have their uh, uh, Galaxy or iPhone with mm -hmm. them, so mm -hmm. their smartphone, mm -hmm. they have their tablet, mm -hmm. they are always on. Mm -hmm. uh, they see, sometimes they see movies, they don't remember uh, if they have seen it on, on a, what screen? kind of screen. Which screen, yeah. What Small kind screen, of screen? screen. Is, is yeah. it uh, the first one, the second yeah. one? Because this is how we call it now. The first one is the TV set, the second one, and for sometimes the first one is no longer the TV set, right. it is uh, the PC or the tablet, right. and more and more the tablet. And you see the people, including in planes, in train, uh, uh, everywhere, uh, having a lunch, and instead of having a beautiful woman in front, they are with their tablet, <laughs> uh, which is a kind of life, not the one I have been educated with, or I grew up with. But it's interesting to see the tablet. Yeah. Uh, and they are communicating uh, uh, all the time with somebody who is uh, most of the time virtual. It's Isn't like it? her. Yeah. I, I don't it's know like if her. you have seen yeah, yeah, the, the movie. Yeah. It, interesting. But have you seen the ad? There's an ad about, you know those dog collars that you put on your dog when you don't want him to bite his leg because there's a little cut and you, there's this big collar. They put, there's an ad where they have the, the collars on so people can't look at their devices and suddenly people have to look up and they see other people and they go, oh, there's a world out there. But, but there, this is, uh, there, there is so many creativity today. Right. And uh, if, if there is something which is, uh, I, I think, um, beyond imagination and beyond any border, 
is the ability of mankind to invent, to innovate, and to imagine. Mm. And I think that this is borderless. And uh, I'm always surprised to see what we can do, mm. what we can offer. There is something which was very funny. I was uh, uh, seeing um, one of the presentations that we made a, a few weeks ago for one of our clients in Paris, and there is a kind of uh, fashion tunnel. So the people were buying, let's say, a pair of shoes. Uh, you, so you buy your shoes, you go in that tunnel, and you have a lot of screens, and you ask, what I, can I buy to go with my shoes? With the shoes, oh, I see. And you have a lot of possibility. Amazing. Was 20 minutes on average. Ooh, the they woman, spend in the tunnel. In the tunnel. They wow. say that they, uh, they pick, then they find this on their mobile phone, on their smartphone, oh. with, on top of this, exactly how to go to the uh, shops to pick the product, the articles that they have chosen, hmm. and to dress on and to see if it fits or not, etc. So it's, I, I say, you, you can change everything. You can change the way you are entertaining uh, your friends, uh, you are communicating, you are learning, you are getting informed, hmm. you are shopping. Hmm. Uh, everything, everything is changing today. Let me ask you about um, kind of a sticky question with the advertising. I mean, consumers are becoming really expert at avoiding advertisements, right? I mean, we've got innovations such as skippable ads on YouTube. We've got second screen stuff. I mean, people do PVRs. I mean, they avoid, you know, your milk and butter, you know, your main product. As, you know, one of the big players, how, you know, what are the big bets that you make to reinvent the marketing model so that it actually is one that is, that is favored by the audience, that the audience actually wants to, to, to be part of it. Is, it, is, this, is this content marketing? I mean, what is, what is, what's the solution to this the, problem? The first thing is that we, we know since uh, before Taivo that uh, there is a lot of possibility of avoiding ad advertising. Yeah. And when you look at the people who are uh, trying to avoid the advertising, uh, you see that it is a very small number of people. Uh, I, I don't want to... Uh, at the time of Taifo, uh, not only they were not avoiding advertising, but there was a slice of Taifo which was devoted to advertising. So You say Taifo, I think I say Tivo, right? Tivo, Taivo, same thing? Uh, oui, oui, Tivo. Moi, je dis Tivo, tivo en français. Tivo en français, c'est Alors, je pensais qu'en anglais, il fallait dire Taivo. Taivo, OK. Uh, si. Mais je dis comme vous voulez. Hein. Oui, non, ça va. Ça. Bon. So, uh, th there is this uh, thing which was uh, con conceived to avoid advertising. Right. The reality is that not only it has not avoided or helped people to avoid advertising, but there was, within the program of Tivo, uh, my dear friend, uh, a slice which was devoted to uh, advertising. So right. it's quite interesting. Uh, when you look at current solutions which exist, uh, uh, there is uh, a, a limited uh, number of people who are really avoiding advertising. Now, it is a challenge for us. I think so. Uh, and th there is, in fact, two challenges. One is vis-a-vis -vis the consumers, and we need, and we always needed to make advertising interesting. And uh, we were using all the tricks of creativity in order to get their attention, to make sure that they, we retain their attention, and we deliver the message to the point that we can change their behavior in favor of the brand. Yep. Either their attitude, they like the brand, or their behavior, they go and shop. By the band, yeah. That is uh, uh, the, the, the goal of advertising and the goal of creativity. Regarding uh, uh, the new world, uh, there is a infinite number of possibilities, uh, starting obviously with uh, the fact that it is interactive, which is the, the, the holy grail. We send a message and we can get the reaction. Something back, yeah. Uh, the, the, what is important is to send the right message to the right person. And what digital is doing is to help us targeting exactly the right cluster of people that we want to address. Mm -hmm. 
That is the first thing. So you, you can have a lot of information on these people, what they like, what they don't like, what they eat, uh, uh, what kind of uh, uh, books they read, music they listen to, etc., etc. And you can have a profile mm -hmm. which helps you to deliver the right message. That is the first thing. This leads to something which is quite interesting, and I'm very often using that example, which is the example of American Express. In the US, we do roughly something like 4,000 ads a year. For American Express. For American Express, mm. which means that more than 10 ads a day, day in, day out, including Sundays. And um, These are television ads or just ads? Ads. Ads, OK. And mostly internet, mobile internet, ads. Internet, mobile. And okay. why so many? It's not because we have many things to sell. It is simply because we can target more precisely right. and by changing a word, by changing an argument, by changing an approach, a catch line or whatever, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we can have a message which is much more relevant to this group of people. And so it's a question the of version, thing, versioning, yeah. Yes, the first thing that do, does the digital world is to help you targeting well. Yeah. The second is interaction. And brand content as well as interactive content because uh, consumer can load their own content. They can participate. They can say, I don't like it, I like it. Uh, they can say the, the end should have been different or they can participate in uh, downloading their own commercial that they would have uh, done with their iPad or their Galaxy phone or whatever. But are you finding, I mean, American Express is an exception because they've really been proactive in this digital world. They've been embracing some of this new stuff. But not all brands are that proactive. It's a big I, issue. I, I agree. The, they financial, get scared, world, they... the financial world is the easiest one mm -hmm. because in the financial world we have... Uh, uh, people who can be connected easily. Consumer goods is more complicated. First, okay. because uh, the, the cost per unit is yeah. very low. Right. And uh, going through fine tuning uh, sometimes is not uh, as relevant as it is to go through TV. Mm. And that is the reason why I don't believe that uh, at any point in time we will avoid uh, to have uh, the carpet bombing, which is um, uh, the large audience yeah. on TV. And then you have uh, uh, the snipers uh, who are going directly to the right, right audience. Right. So we, we, we need both. Let me ask you this, because this is an audience of TV producers and broadcasters. In some ways, they see that agencies, like your creative agencies, are becoming producers themselves. You're becoming producers of content. You know, you're, you're producing, you, you mentioned it right at the beginning, you know, the three and a half minute, you know, ad for Cartier. I mean, is it an ad? Is it a piece of content? Is that, that's a threat to these people? Or is it, are, do you want to bring them in? I mean, in a way, it seems like you're, it used to be very distinct. You know, there were two silos, the people that created the television and then the people that created the ads. And this supported that. Now, it's getting more mixed. We, we, okay, we, we are... Uh, so you're in comp competition with in, these in guys. In French, we would say des faux amis. Des faux amis. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, we, we false are... False friends? Uh, no, it's not exactly the same. It's okay. not false friends. Okay. But uh, faux amis, it's close, but not that close. <laughs> uh, so uh, they, they have their independence. They are directors, producers, and they do their work in their way. But at the same time, you see a lot of directors who are uh, doing uh, TV series or even big movies uh, for the big screens uh, who are directing uh, films for uh, advertising. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is, uh, I, I can tell you the, the long list of great, great directors who have uh, shot uh, commercials. Sure. Uh, so we, we always had that kind of relationship, but without entering in each other field. Today, it is clear, if you look, for example, uh, we, we have two subsidiaries who are working on content. One is Newcast, which is a subsidiary of uh, Zenith Optimedia, mm -hmm. and the other one is uh, Starcom MediaVest, yep. which has a, a a subsidiary called Liquid 
liquid, liquid threads. threads yeah. And um, liquid threads have shot something like 400 uh, series uh, last year, in 2013, 400 episodes. Mm. Um, with new cast, uh, we had uh, something like uh, 70 or 80. Uh, we, we have created also some specific uh, web series in France, and for example, for Ben Piparibal, Les Colloques, who has had a, a great success. And I think this is something which we do with uh, the TV people. We, we share, we go to see them, we say, okay, we have that idea, do you believe that is something that you can be interested in? We are co-producers, and sometimes we are executive producers, sometimes we are just producer, uh, and all this is for the brand uh, and paid by our clients. So how do you feel when the you know, the TV guys say, oh, you know, it's getting too much like advertising. Ooh, we don't like this. It's, you know, nice creativity. We love your money, but we don't really like the way you're trying to influence the, the end product. Does but that happen we, a lot still? First, we, uh, there, there is uh, uh, everyone's right to judge. And uh, I must say that sometimes I see, uh, I watch five minutes of a series and I go to sleep or I open a book and I spend more time reading my book than watching the TV. This is my right. They don't like my advertising, this is their right. And uh, I, I think it should be a little bit presumptuous uh, to say I am the guardian of the taste of what is good and what's bad. So this is something I would never do. Okay. Uh, that being said, uh, when we have a product and when we have a, a script, we agree upon and we do it together. And some great directors uh, have said, uh, I like to do this or I don't like to do this. Some uh, uh, TV producers uh, are coming to see us uh, with some ideas. We like the idea, the client like or doesn't like the idea because at the end of the day, it's the client who is paying. This is brand content, and yeah. it's called brand content. Mm -hmm. It has to serve a purpose. It's not at all the same that what uh, uh, the TV producers are doing. The TV producers are trying to get maximum audience or the audience they want they are targeting. We are targeting a specific audience with a specific message. Uh, so we are not only storytellers uh, per se, we are storytellers about a, a brand and a message that we are paid to carry to the audience that we are targeting. And we don't try to mix the business. Uh, they are in the show business, we are in the advertising business, uh, we respect what they do. Uh, I hope that they respect what we do. And I wish that they do respect what we do because most, not most, but a lot of them are coming from our world. Uh, it is where they have uh, been trained, educated, they have learned, etc. Paid, uh, it was a training paid by the advertisers. And then they have exercised their uh, talent in creating something specific. Uh, and uh, it works. Let's talk about millennials, younger people. Because yeah. younger people are interesting and they are doing different things. As an advertiser, or an, a, a, you know, running a group that is about advertising, how do you reach these people and how are you integrating more with the Twitters and the Facebooks and the LinkedIn and the Spotify's and how are you working with those guys to make sure you don't lose out I call it maybe the lost generation that won't, won't listen yes. to advertising in the same way that maybe our generation did. Yes, you will barely see uh, the uh, millennials in LinkedIn, uh, but you will see them in Instagram, Facebook, etc. Spotify. Spotify, absolutely. Uh, Deezer. Deezer. Uh, the, the, and uh, YouTube, uh, obviously, and uh, also Dailymotion in France, as we are in France. Uh, the communication with them is very different. Mm. Uh, and uh, we should not try to use the same kind of approach and we should not try to use uh, the same communication. Uh, mostly it is about uh, interactivity, 
and using uh, uh, social networks and trying to find a, an idea wh which is uh, fun for them. They will uh, feel good with that idea. They will consider that this idea is something which works well for them. Um, if I you look at uh, the people who are doing this uh, yeah. at uh, Publicis, uh, so Digitas, Resort Fish, okay. uh, right. or the other operation we have, you will see there are mainly between 22 and 25 years old. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, roughly a third of my age. Yeah. I, I wrote a column uh, recently. I called it the, the age of the selfie ad. You know, this whole idea that yeah. people take pictures of themselves. And I, it just seems to me that this is starting to be almost come a trend. I mean, as you, you said that you want, they want to have something that they feel part of, that they can share and things like that. I mean, this is a very different approach. This is something we approach. did. This is something we did for Samsung. You did this it for Samsung. Us. Mm. So the famous selfie, the two selfies, uh, which are so famous, the one with all the uh, actors at uh, the, the Oscar, yeah, with Ellen uh, DeGeneres. Yes, and the second with uh, President Obama. Mm -hmm. The two have been done by our teams. They were done by your teams. Yeah. Because it was Samsung phones, right? Yeah. Did the, the Samsung, did the Samsung phones get mentioned, or was it just about Ellen DeGeneres and Barack Obama? Uh, if uh, you look at uh, what we called earned media, so mm. we, we have poem, paid, owned, earned. Mm. The earned media, all the buzz which has been done around uh, the Oscars, represent roughly. A, a value between 800 million and a billion US dollars. Wow. Because it has been all over the world. Yeah. And the Samsung phone was either mentioned or seen. Hmm. Because what you saw is that the people taking the, the phone and uh, making the selfie, and behind there was someone taking the picture of the group. But you didn't like, actually give Barack Obama the phone and say, do it, or...? or no, but we did it uh, with somebody else who picked the, uh, the picture with Barack Obama. I see. OK, so you, you were in there knowing that the, he was maybe going to uh, do uh, this, uh, right? Yeah. Or was it Cameron that was the in? No, 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 no. <laughs> We will not give you the recipe. <laughs> the recipe. So uh, you're not going to give us the recipe? Come on, we need the recipe, right? No, you don't want the recipe. I don't want the recipe, OK. Um, uh, each one is those business. What these about are TV people. They are not interested in this kind of thing. Oh, yes, they are. They are. These are business TV people. They're creative, but they also know they have to make it work money-wise. Co-productions are on the rise. They've got to work with people like you to get money. It's, these are business people. They have to be in the uh, new world. I have a lot of respect for them because they are making much more money than we do. Oh, you think? Uh, I don't know if I <laughs> agree with you on that one. Okay. Um, I had a question just about data. Quickly, because data, you mentioned it before. You said, you know, we can see everything, we can collect all this stuff. There's a threat, though, to who owns the data. I mean, now the brands are going to control the data. They're, I mean, is there a worry from your side that you're going to get disintermediated? In other words, you will lose control of the data, and the brands will have the data. I'm talking about the future of agencies in general. Where do you fit into the, into the environment where, you know, the brands own the data, they, do, they go direct to the consumer because they have all these channels they can go to the consumer? It just is such a different and approach. Well, they need you. This is a very interesting question because um, it, it happened that they started in this business in, uh, in the 60s and uh, Publicis in 71. Uh, and most of the time, there was always someone, every other year, someone coming with an idea which will disintermediate the agency. Mm. Uh, and uh, agencies have never been as strong as they are today. Mm -hmm. So this intermediation is not working really. And uh, I remember at the late uh, 90s or at the mid-2000, uh, uh, in the 2005 or 2006, you saw a lot of analyst reports saying agencies will be disintermediated, Google will own the uh, advertising space, etc., etc. And in those days, if you do remember, Google bought a lot of uh, operation in order to do TV, to do radio, mm -hmm. newspapers, sales, uh, etc. At the end of the day, they divested everything because they found that it was two different business models and two different skills. Mm. I'm not trying to be Google. I'm not trying to be a TV producer. I'm just trying to understand what my brand stands mm. for, mm. 
what the brands want to do, and uh, what kind of message the brand wants to deliver to which kind of audience, and what the brand wants to get from that audience. And if I'm doing this right, uh, then uh, I think uh, I will achieve my, my goal. It's not about uh, data. I don't know, by the way, who owns the data. Uh, and I hope that everyone will own it, because the day there is only one who is owning the data, that day we are in the Orwell world. Yeah, as long as uh, the data is not owned by uh, Google, Facebook, etc., yeah, but, but they do, shared they by do everyone. Have, they do have the data. I mean, Netflix but has data. They the don't problem share it is us. not that they Google do has data. have it. The T Twitter is, has are data. Are they going to share it? Mm. If they share it, it's fine. Mm. They can be the custodian of the data. I have no problem with this. It has to be stored somewhere. But uh, I think that everyone should have access. And the real owner of the data is not. Uh, any platform, it's you regarding your data, it's me regarding mine, uh, and everyone in this room regarding his or her own data. And I think that what we should be very cautious about is uh, to do not give the power to anyone to own the data, uh, and particularly not government. Mm. Uh, for sure. Yeah, the the latest to have uh, mm. uh, control of the data should be the government. Mm -hmm. So as long as this is something which is shared, I don't see any problem. I think that we can control uh, the, the way it is used. And if it is used to sell product, it is very little with what has been done when people had access to some uh, information and they use it on uh, p for political purposes. Yeah. So I, I consider personally that uh, uh, the use of data for political purposes should be banned, uh, that no government should have access to any data. I am absolutely comfortable with the fact that Google or Facebook or Twitter is uh, the custodian of the data, but I believe that they should share with anyone in order that this is not something which is controlled by one single body. Well, that is a great place to end because we have a Twitter speech next, so maybe he'll pick up on the theme. Uh, yeah? uh, what would you have? Deb Roy is going to talk about Twitter data and how he analyzes That's great. that, which is okay. great. But could you please join me in you know, thanking, I mean, Maurice Levy, he's been in this business for, for a long, long time. Forever. Oh, forever. And, uh, and that will come in about 20 years. Oh, now, come on. And he'll, uh, hopefully the Omnicom deal will go through. We're still waiting for uh, regulation. Uh, hopefully. We, yeah, and then it'll be Publicis Omnicom or Omnicom Publicis, and you'll be Publicis co-CEO. Publicis Omnicom. CEO, co -CEO, and that'll uh, be your next... Be co -CEO. That'll be your next role, yeah? I would be just a co You'll just be a co. Just a co. Just a co. That's okay. Well, you're a pretty co. nice co. I yeah. really enjoyed being okay. with you. Hope Thank you, you enjoyed it. Please join me in thanking you. Thank you. Maurice Levy. Thank you.